Well, hey folks, research here. Yes, yes, it's me again. You knew I'd come back one of these days, and so I found an interesting little game here, Civil War Secret Missions. This is a partnership game between Cauldron and the History Channel, of all damn things. Uh, it was published by Activision, or if you want to get technical, it was published by Activision Value. Uh, and it is an interesting first-person shooter that is, uh, as you'll soon see, trying to cash in on the popularity of the Call of Duty type games that were coming out around this same time. This was published at the end of 2008. Now, as you can see here, I have already played this game. I've gone through every single level here. If you're going to play this game, and I'm really not sure why you would, I'm going to recommend that you do the same thing, that you play through the entire game on easy before you try to play it for real. And the reason for that is, as you play through the game, you gain skills. Uh, you gain points that you can then invest into more damage, more health, extra ammunition, things like that. Uh, but the thing is, the game is very, very difficult to play without at least a few of those skills. I don't think it could even be beaten on the harder difficulty uh, without having first played through the entire thing. So if you're going to play this game, I recommend you play it, you get your points, then you play it again for real. Under the command of General Hooker, a Union army of 130,000 men crossed the Rappahannock River on April 27, 1863. They advanced upon the Confederates led by Robert E. Lee. Lee's army numbered less than half as many men as Hooker's and were not nearly as well supplied or well rested. But one of Lee's commanders, Jeb Stuart, received word from one of his scouts that there was a weakness in the Union's right wing. With reinforcements failing to arrive in time and the enemy starting to encircle him, Lee made a bold and risky decision. Lee ordered one of his most daring generals, Stonewall Jackson, to strike out at dawn with his troops. Under the cover of the wilderness, they would march for 12 miles and strike a sudden and decisive blow against the Union's vulnerable right flank. Okay, there you go. Union General Joe Hooker's coming after us, and we are an advanced scout away. party from uh, Stonewall Jackson's crew. Me, man. Wait until they're closer. Don't waste ammo we don't got. One shot, one hit. One shot, one hit. You know, for a game from 2008, I'm really quite impressed by the graphics here. Uh, of course, that's a game from 2008 being played on a modern machine, uh, so take that as you will. Uh, also, this game uses the Havoc physics engine. That's an upgrade. You see, this game is actually a sequel. There was an earlier uh, Civil War game made by this same publishing company. Uh, Cauldron is the company behind all of the Cabela's Big Game Hunter games, by the way. Okay, here we go. We have a couple of different rifles to choose from. We're holding a Henry rifle. Uh, and we also have a Spencer rifle, and then down on the ground is a Whitworth sniper rifle. So I'm trying to decide what to do here. I think we're going to go with the Whitworth because it is not that common of a weapon in this game. Luckily, they give us lots of ammunition here, so we'll go ahead and pick that up. You see that this is truly a sniper rifle. It has a scope and everything. It's a telescope. It's a four-power scope. Uh, but as you can also see, it is a musket. It is a rifled musket, and so we have to reload it uh, every time. Luckily, it's quite a quite a fast load here. Uh, the Whitworth rifle is an English rifle. It was used by the Confederates almost exclusively. It fired kind of a strange bullet. It was a hexagonal bullet. Uh, many of these have been recovered from uh, uh, from battlefields after the fight. The, uh, the bullet was used was, uh, was much longer and skinnier than, uh, than bullets of that time typically were. It was in a uh, 451 caliber, which was a bit unusual uh, for its time. Uh, it was quite a heavy rifle, especially with the telescope. Apparently the poor people using the thing pretty much always had black eyes because the recoil was so bad the 
telescope would just go right back into your eye socket. Now you can see I've switched over to the Spencer rifle. Now this game has quite a few Henry rifles in it. Now don't get me wrong, I love the Henry rifle. It's a beautiful rifle. One of the first lever action guns, one of the most effective of the repeaters, uh, but it has certain issues here. The Henry rifle, while not particularly common, uh, was not a powerful weapon. Here we go. What's all this? A real mess you made here, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. I sent you on a scouting expedition, soldier. I didn't expect you to draw the attention of the entire army of the Potomac. No, sir. I take full responsibility, sir. So why do I find you barricaded in this church with a pile of Union corpses around it? Sorry, sir. I just wanted to make sure there were no Yanks around the church before heading to the furnace. I see you found a few, didn't you? Afraid so, sir. And you don't seem to be too unhappy about it either. No, sir. We're Rangers. We ain't afraid of a few Yankees. Well done, Lieutenant. Continue your mission. Check the furnace for enemy troops and the possibility of supplies. Oh, and Lieutenant? Yes, sir? Next time when you engage the enemy, try and leave more for us. Will do, sir. <laughs> you heard the General. We head out in five minutes. Get ready! Well, as I live and breathe, that was Lieutenant General Thomas Jonathan Stonewall Jackson. Famous Confederate general. He got that name at first Manassas, though he played a pretty critical Save role me. in quite a few Thank conflicts. You. Uh, now, you see, I just helped a fella on the ground there. Uh, you get certain bonus objectives in these levels here. You can run around, you can help people, you can retrieve certain things. Uh, in this case, there are three wounded soldiers to help. You run up to them, you hold down... F, uh, or, considering this game was made for PS2 and Xbox 360, you would assume, I assume, hold down a different key. Uh, anyway, you hold down F, you pick the guy up, he runs off, he says thank you, but unfortunately, the port over to, uh, over to PC didn't do terribly well, and there are a number of bugs in this game. Nothing game-breaking, nothing critical, but you will see, uh, that, uh, the third survivor cannot be rescued, and it's, it's really a shame. So here's a fella, here's a little bonus thing. You can pick up a letter, my dearest Josephine, it has been some time since I have had the opportunity to write to you. We've been on the march for days and must sleep when there is a chance to do so. I'm, uh, I miss you and the boys so much. Tell Jonathan that he must do what he has told, uh, you know, the usual stuff there, you know, just, just filler to make you feel like you're really there. Anyway, I, I really am quite impressed with the graphics here, considering the age of this game, the budget of this game, I'm assuming the budget. There's the Whitworth again. Uh, so like I said, hexagonal bullets. Uh, it could fire soft lead bullets, or it could fire a much harder bullet if it was already formed into that hexagonal shape. It was really quite an effective rifle. There was kind of a funny story uh, with Union General John Sedgwick at the Battle of the Spotsylvania Courthouse uh, where his men were hiding down in a trench and he was treading back and forth along the top of the trench yelling at his men for hiding, saying, I'm ashamed of you, they couldn't hit an elephant at this distance, and then he was promptly shot in the head. Uh, he was shot by a Whitworth rifle. Five separate men claimed credit for that kill. And here we go, a bunch of guys all piled in here. Wouldn't it be nice if we could clear out lots of guys at once? Well, there we go. Yes, this is a Civil War game with grenades. Now, any of you who know your military armaments history, uh, you may recall that these grenades did exist. Uh, so what that appears to be is a Ketchum grenade. Uh, if you look at the little logo there in the corner, you see I've still got seven Ketchum grenades, and those things looked, more than anything else, like Nerf footballs. It was like an elongated kind of iron egg, and then it had a big fin out the back, a uh, tail. And uh, the idea there was to stabilize the grenade as you threw it in a big arc and, uh, and allow it to fall on the nose, and there was a big percussion cap in the nose. Now, there were a number of these grenades used, but they were pretty ineffective, really not, uh, not a very good piece of equipment at all. 
There was a, a piece of writing, uh, Field Artillery Projectiles of the American Civil War, written back in 1980, uh, that notes that even though a hundred Ketchum grenades were found at Port Hudson in both three pound and five pound varieties, not a single fragment uh, was ever found. And so they were clearly not all that effective. There's a pretty funny story in there. Uh, apparently those nose pieces, uh, the percussion caps are so ineffective that during one particular siege, uh, a number of these grenades were raining down on a Confederate position, uh, and these Confederates didn't know what they were because they weren't exploding. So they picked them up and threw them back over the wall where they did explode. And then suddenly they realized that these were uh, these were explosives. So they they sent a bunch of runners, went off and got blankets, and had guys just holding blankets behind the parapets like uh, like a trampoline, and they caught these grenades as they came sailing over the wall uh, and then hurled them back into the Union uh, uh, into the Union forces there. And since the Confederates were up on a rise and uh, they were able to throw down, uh, their throws were much more effective. And so, uh, so that's just another, another silly story of weaponry out of the American Civil War, I suppose. Now, you've noticed that I'm using the Spencer rifle here. I haven't actually gotten around to reading the data saying how much damage each of the weapons in this game. But if it's anything like real life, I can certainly tell you that the Spencer rifle is going to be a damn sight more effective than the Henry rifle. Now, while the Henry rifle was the forerunner of the classic Winchester rifle, the gun that won the West, you know, kind of classic uh, John Wayne cowboy lever gun, uh, the Henry rifle had a number of issues, and one of them was that it fired a very, very small bullet. Uh, it could hold quite a few rounds. You see my Confederate buddy here and these Union men are all using Henry rifles, but uh, but it fired a very small bullet, and that bullet was not terribly effective. It didn't have much stopping power. Uh, it didn't kill very easily. And so, uh, if that is being modeled in this game, then the Henry rifle is not effective. And I have found that using the Henry rifle does tend to... Uh, does seem to take more shots, two or even three rounds to kill the enemy, uh, where the Spencer rifle is firing a bullet the size of your thumb and is uh, far, far more effective. My goodness, here we go. Well, here's something that probably never played out in the Civil War, but uh, what are you going to do? So what you can see here is I'm holding the Colt rifle uh, in everybody's race to build a repeating rifle. Colt came up with something that was basically a Colt pistol with that big old chamber there and just had a very very long rifle barrel now this is not great because remember this is the age of black powder oh up ahead here is our uh, our second wounded guy this is the age of black powder which means it's not unusual for powder to leak out of the bullets uh, and so these Colt rifles unfortunately had a bad tendency to cook off, to do a gang fire where all the rounds would fire at once. Now, normally that's nothing too much to worry about, but look at where my guy's left hand is. Where are those bullets going to go if every round in that goes off? Yes, that's right. Uh, so, the users of the Colt rifles, uh, many found that, uh, that the damn things were more dangerous to themselves than to the enemy, so they were not terribly popular, obviously. Uh, that never caught on, and what was far, far more effective was the, uh, the lever-action Henry uh, and the lever-action Spencer rifle, which are uh, both very interesting pieces. Now, I have a magic cannon here that can be fired without a crew. That's convenient. Uh, but this uh, this one gets a little bit tricky. Because I played the game through once already, and I already have my points sunk into, oh, uh, health and damage regen and things like that, this is not too difficult. But I will tell you, this is an extremely frustrating level the first time you play this through. Guys are coming everywhere. You can't tell where the bullets are coming from. It only takes a couple of shots to kill you. There are snipers way up on those wooden towers. Very, very, very frustrating. So... I can just sort of shrug off these rounds and uh, not have to worry about it much here. But uh, what you're supposed to do 
is jump on the cannons and uh, blow up those two towers. Unfortunately, this game makes cannon shooting very, very difficult. The, the rounds f uh, fly in a very big arc. It's hard to aim, and you're going to see in future levels that force you to use cannons uh, that uh, it's really not very much fun. So the reason those towers are still up is because I was not able to aim well enough to take them down. I'll have to do it after I clear this area. Here we go. We've got another cannon set up over here. Our sniper is way up on that tower. Now two snipers can see me. You, you can really see the uh, the inspiration uh, from Call of Duty and, and other similar type games. You start to get the the black and white blurry vision after a little while, so you just hide for a little bit and you know, grit your teeth or God knows what, and, uh, and then suddenly your health comes back. So I'm trying to hit this tower, and the American flag is stopping my rounds, so I decide that's enough of that for right now. Let's get some health back. There's my Colt rifle again. Colt rifle didn't fire a particularly large round, but it does seem to do pretty good damage in this game, so all right. That round was stopped by the railing. These guys are just going to keep spawning until I push in here. Almost. All right, there we go. So we'll run over here. So of the three repeaters in this game, the Colt, as you can see, uses a cylinder. The uh, Henry rifle uh, uses your kind of, kind of classic loading mechanism of the old lever guns. And then the Spencer has uh, its bullets all in a tube. Here's the third guy. Look at this. Hold F to revive. You hold it down and nothing happens. It just stops midway through. I've tried and tried many different ways, many different times to help this guy. This never seems to work. So, uh, so you completionists, you people who need to get all the bonus objectives, all the achievements, this is not the game for you. I'll tell you, it's very frustrating to get the this far and uh, and not be able to achieve the objective. Anyway, here's more ammunition. These ammo boxes have bullets, obviously, but they always have a few grenades in them as well. I think over the course of this game, your one character probably throws more grenades than were thrown in the entire damned war. There's old General Robert E. Lee, beloved of the American South. This is an interesting time to be playing this game since the... Uh, uh, certain monuments of the Confederate Army are in the uh, in the news lately. Uh, this video series is not going to get political. We are not going to talk about uh, the right and the wrong of, of any of this stuff. But people have their positions and people have their opinions, and everyone's opinion deserves to be heard. Uh, whether you agree with it or not, maybe especially if you don't agree with it. So let's try to be civil here, but uh, but let's just also say that the past is past and there's not much anyone can do about that now. So here we go. We've taken out the camp. We're going to go push through. The game just throws Henry rifles at you left and right. It's a little bit of a pain to pick those up later on in a level because... Uh, you lose all the ammo you have for your uh, for your current uh, rifle. You know, say we have 100 rounds for the Spencer rifle. If I pick up a Henry, it'll probably only have 10 or 11 rounds in it. Uh-oh, something's wrong over here. This is Chancellorsville, remember? Oh, dear. Dear Lord, what happened? I don't know for sure. He's wounded. Someone shot him. He gonna survive? He's gotta survive. We need him. That's unfortunate. That was Stonewall Jackson. Chancellorsville uh, was, of course, Stonewall Jackson's last battle. He was shot by some of his own men, killed by friendly fire. Uh, very unfortunate there. Uh, he was shot in the arm. His arm was amputated. And then several days later, he died of pneumonia and various other things. Uh Stonewall Jackson was a character. He was really a man of many contrasts. Uh, he was a deeply religious man. He accepted killing as, as a necessity of war, and he accepted slavery, but he made an effort to educate slaves. He was a very aggressive fighter. He was a brilliant tactician. Uh, but he remained second only to Robert E. Lee, 
in the adoration of the Southern people. Uh, he is held in high regard around the world for his military maneuvers. So, uh, so without going into the particulars of his politics, uh, many, many people believe that he was a fine, fine military commander. And in fact, because Chancellorsville was before Gettysburg uh, and he died at Chancellorsville, of course, uh, many people wonder if maybe Gettysburg would have played out differently if Stonewall Jackson had survived. Uh, in any case... Doesn't matter anymore now, does it? So that was level one of Civil War Secret Missions. I hope you'll tune in for the next episode. Have a good one.